Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing well. So today I'm going to be giving a makeover to three thrift finds. So the first one I have painted it off camera already. This is a salt pig and it was white so I'll leave the photo of what it looked like here. I've painted it bronze, I've given it two coats of paint here and I am going to be transforming this into like a bee skep, a beehive and I know that this is a really large entrance and usually beehives have very small little holes but I kind of wanted this to be as though we as humans are getting an insight into the world inside like of a beehive so that's what I'm going with it's kind of like a diorama so I painted it and the second thing that I want to do is to be taking some of this packaging so we're going to also be doing trash to treasure here so I thought that this really looked like honeycombs when you stretch it out and that's why I saved it and finally we're going to get to use it for today's project one of the things I want to do first for the inside, you can paint it but I think that's going to be a little bit difficult unless you're going to be using spray paint. So I'm just going to take some of this, it's kind of like um, tissue paper but it's not organza maybe. So I'm going to just rip it, it doesn't have to be neat. And I'm going to scrunch it up a little and I'm just going to place it inside. Just making sure that I cover any white areas because when we look in we don't want to see any of the white. You can also do this like in an orange colour to kind of represent the honey. And you can stick that in place but I'm just going to leave mine like this. Next you kind of want to measure out how much you want from this packaging. So then you're going to cut it and we're going to stick it inside. It is going to be a little bit tricky. I didn't want it outside like this. I kind of want it to be inside. So I'm just roughly cutting around it. And you want it a little bit bigger than the actual entrance because we need something to stick it by. And then I think I could kind of do the rest without holding that. Let's set that aside. And just get these holes opened a little bit better. When you're doing this just make sure you don't pull it too hard because you don't want to break it or to rip it rather. You kind of want all of the holes there otherwise it won't look that realistic. So I was just sitting here thinking that the adhesive is a little bit tricky because we're going to be working with the inside and also you have to kind of make sure it's really nice and taut for it to have the effect of the honeycombs. So I thought with the hot glue it's just going to burn me, it's just going to be getting cold and you know I'm going to have to work under time pressure. So what I'm actually going to do is use double sided tape. So here's my tape, I'm just going to rip a little and I'm going to add it to the sides and you just want to do that all around take the backing off that's one done so as you can see I've got all my tape here now and this is going to be the trickiest part of this project. Trying to get this in, stick it inside and making sure it's really nice and taut. So I think I'm about done now and I am going to add some rope right on the entrance like this. So we're going to glue that all around using our hot glue and just cut its size. So just snipping off the excess here and then we'll just stick that down. So off camera I just took some acrylic paint, this is yellow, and then I also took a gold and I mixed it up to get a really nice honey colour. I then applied the honey inside here just to make it look more like honeycombs. 
So as you can see, I've got some lines that I've drawn here and that's just with some soft pastels. I've got three colours here and I just want to give it some definition and just make it look more like a beehive or a bee skip. So I'm going to carry on drawing around. I've got one half done, so I kind of just need to match where I've drawn those lines here. And then I'm going to connect them at the back as well. And this doesn't have to be really neat because you're kind of going to blend it in anyway. I'm going in with my second one here. And then take your yellow, kind of add that in the middle. Looks like a right mess right now, but it's going to blend in nicely. And then the fun part. Start blending in. And just as I'm doing that, I'd like to take the chance to tell you that today's video is part of a friendly collab. So there's going to be a playlist with lots more ideas for you to enjoy. We're all doing thrift makeovers. And today's guest is Donna. I really, really love Donna. So please do check them all out. So once you're done watching my video, you can head over to the playlist and show the rest of the girls some love. Now I'm going to be taking my hot glue and this has like a honey coloured glue stick if you can see that and I'm going to start drizzling that right here at the entrance and I'm going to try to bring it down a little as well so it actually looks like it's dripping. Another alternative is just to use normal hot glue and then just paint it into a nice honey colour. I've also put some in the jar itself and then I'm going over the honeycomb a little just to kind of make it look more realistic here so it really will look like a honeycomb kind of gives it like that wet look be very careful though when you do this because obviously it's like paper packaging paper and I'm going to finish off by sticking the B as the final touch. This is actually a brooch. Um, I'm going to just stick him here with some hot glue and then I think we're done with this project. Just to finish off, I'm going to add a little bit of greenery and I was really debating whether I should do this or not. But because I have two other projects in mind, I just really wanted to kind of fit in. So that's why I went with adding it in the end. So I'm taking these leaves. And I'm also going to add this purple flower, pink and lilac, right there. And I'm just going to do that with hot glue and then we're done. So just to remind you, we went from this to this. I really think this is so cute and it's really, really unique. You all know me by now. I'm sure you can guess that this is something that I have made. And if you're new to my channel, I really love making unique things that are kind of whimsy as well. And we hit two birds with one stone here. We did a thrift flip or a thrift makeover and a trash to treasure project. So we're moving on to the second project now. And these are my thrift vines. So what do you think we'll create? With these, I've got a teacup, I've got a saucer, well you can actually know from the thumbnail, and I've got a sweets jar, and we're going to turn this into a teacup gnome. The first thing you're going to do is stick your sweets jar, and you don't have to use a jar like this, I'm just simply using all I've got, but you want something that you can use as the body of the gnome. And then you're going to take some hot glue and you're not going to stick it right in the centre. You want to stick it a little bit further away and that's because we're going to have some feet for the gnome. So I'm going to take my glue, right, I'm going to add it on the bottom here. I've still got the honey colour from the first project. 
out some of the glue still coming through. And you can secure the sound with E6000 as well or some super glue. The next thing you want to do is take your teacup and place it on top. So if you are using a jar, you want to make sure that the teacup can actually go on there nicely. You also want to find something that isn't too short, isn't too long, isn't too wide, because you have to remember this is actually the body of the gnome. So just imagine that. I know it's just a jar at the moment. Let's have a look at where we need the glue to go. On the outer sides of this jar, I think. It should be enough. I'm going to stick that right on. Hold it for a while. For the gnome's feet, or shoes rather, I'm taking some tiny dog shoes. Now you can find key rings on Amazon, like shoe key rings, and those work perfectly. They're better than these. And I'm just going to remove this. So I'm going to grab my scissors and cut this off just so it's easy to work with. And obviously we don't need these on there either. So I'm grabbing my gold acrylic paint. I'm just going to go and paint these. So I'm going to go ahead and just do both of these and then we'll move on to the next stage. My little boots have dried and I've also placed them where I would think I would like them and because I've done that I'm just making sure that I hold it down and taking my hot glue just to glue them down. So when it comes to making the beard, make sure that you cut the beard the way that the fluff or the fur is going down because if you stick it on like that this is actually going up so I'm going to kind of measure roughly how much I want to cut and then I'm just going to cut a small triangle and we're going to stick it on to the jar. So now I need to just trim my beard to size downwards into a triangle. I'm happy with how long it is here on the sides but I just need to tidy him up a little. So when you're happy, go ahead and stick that down. And for the nose, you can take anything you like. You can even make it out of plasticine or polymer clay. This is a bead. I always use the beads. And I'm going to stick that down right here under the cup. I wish I didn't have the ones with holes in, but that's the only ones that I've got right now. How cute is he looking so far? Now I'm going to add a flower. I was thinking this one, but my hobby decided that this one actually looks better. So I'll go with his opinion, even though I think it's this one that looks better. <laughs> I think our little gnome needs some arms. This is optional. You don't have to do it. But yeah, I just felt like he is missing them. So I've got some material here. This is actually just a scarf. I also have some pipe cleaners and this is how I'm going to make his hands. So you're going to have two pipe cleaners and I have just folded it like this in half and then once again and then just twist them at the ends so it doesn't open up. This is also going to ensure that your arms can actually be moved because it's all wired. And take your material, mine's really bright and yellow, just to match the sunflower. And we're going to wrap it around. Make sure you can't see the pipe cleaner. So you might have to do this several times. Until you're happy. And then I'm just going to take my hot glue. Be careful with your fingers. Secure that and then we'll cut that. So this is one arm done almost. I'm going to add a little bead as his hand. So taking my glue again, I'm just going to put that through. Okay, let's move on to making the next one. 
same process obviously so there we have it two little arms made now we're going to attach it onto the sides of our jar We're going to apply a touch of colour to his nose and the way that I like to do this is by taking some old makeup and just gently brushing it on his nose. So you can do noses different colours, you don't have to go the wooden bead alone. This just adds a little subtle colour, giving him a kind of a brown bronzy nose to match the shoes as well. And I'm going to add two little dots, or three, using my dotting tool and some paint. You don't need much at all, this is the side that I'm going to use. So I'm just stabbing it here. I'm going to start decorating around the saucer a little. To do that I'm going to be taking some moss and I'm going to just take my hot glue, add quite a good amount there and we're just going to place some moss in the corner. And I'm going to add more hot glue on top of the moss and a little on his arm because I'm going to be adding two flowers on there. I'm taking this arrangement that I put together in a previous project and I'm also going to stick that on the side. I suddenly had this idea come to me and I just think it's so adorable but I have to do it. I'm going to use this part of the teacup as though it's a bird bath. So I'm going to be applying some UV resin to it and then I'm going to cure it. So I've got some pigment there. This is blue powdered pigment. And then I'm taking my resin Oh, whoops, wrong thing there. And I'm going to mix that in to create water. Got my toothpick. It's a nice little technique here if you haven't seen this before. Let's mix that in. And then let's take these two chicks, so let's just plop him inside and this one and then we're going to cure it and this is UV light and you're just going to place your UV light on top of your resin for around two to three minutes. Look at what I'm doing, I'm using the arm to hold it while I can clean a table as it cures. So this is nice and cure now. As you can see it's not tacky, it's all dried solid. And then I'm going to be taking this paper plate. I have just used it in a previous project. I'm going to take the bee and happy. Let's just cut that out. We're going to be creating like a sign using that. So just taking my scissors and cutting around. Attach some hot glue to the card. You just need a trap and we're going to stick that to the straw. So that's our B and then happy. Let's see how we want that to be. I've taken a very long time on this little Nomi. He's well worth it I think though. So I've just got this side left and hopefully I think I'll be done then. So what I'm going to do is just take some moss and these are flowers I've actually stuck on moss um, in a previous project and I'm just getting to reuse them now. But I think I might need a little bit more moss before we place those down. So I'm going to take my hot glue and just glue a little bit on the side here. I'm actually not really a known person but when I make them, I actually like the gnomes that I make. It's kind of a bit funny, but I really do like this little guy. Right, so these are the small flowers. I actually got them on Amazon and they were from China, but they were very, very cheap. 
And I quite like them because they're dainty and they're pretty. And I like everything that's quite small. <laughs> and if you know me by now, you know that I really love making miniatures and teacups and very like whimsical, magical things. And if you are new to my channel, then I would love if you can click that subscribe button. Now I've cut the straw down to a size I'm happy with and I also placed a bee on the top and I'm going to attach the straw to the side here with my hot glue. I thought I was finished but my brain threw another idea at me so I'm taking one of these little miniature um, jars and I'm going to fill it with fake honey like I did on my first project so I'm just getting my hot glue ready and I have this beautiful ribbon that I found actually in the thrift store and I really really love it because it looks like it's been printed on and I think I'm going to go with this one here so I'm going to cut that off let's start around about here and we're going to glue this on we're going to stick that on like, like it's a label almost. Look at how beautiful that looks already. And we're going to put some honey in. There's my honey coloured hot glue. I'm not going to go all the way. We've just got enough. You can see there, look at that. I'm going to glue that right in there. So I want him to hold the jar now. So I'm going to just apply the glue, oh that's the honey colours glue still, oh well. And then we have to get his other hand on there as well. I've added a little bee to the sunflower and they've got like, let me just show you, they have printed wings and they're white and they're flat. Let me get one out. So I'm not really happy with them. So what I've done is I've added a little hot glue and it's really made quite a different set. I've even peeled it up very very slightly so that it kind of looks more like wings so that's a little tip if you do use these and these are from Amazon they usually come in a pack and I have used a lot again very cheap because they come from China so we went from this teacup and saucer set which I think were actually really beautiful to begin with to this cutie pie he is a labour of love, that's all I can say. I don't think I've ever spent so long working on a gnome and obviously we edit the video down so it was a lot longer than it actually looks but I really love him, he's definitely my favourite gnome I've ever made. So for our last thrift makeover I'm taking this white jug and even though it is white it kind of has like a greyish tint to it and I just really wanted to give it a fresh coat of paint, I mean this isn't painted so I am starting over here and sometimes I find that applying paint to surfaces that are really smooth like this just doesn't work very well with a typical paintbrush so that's why I'm taking this sponge brush and it does give it a texture to it but you can sand that off if you don't like the texture. So my jar is nice and dry, I only did one coat of paint but I think that's enough for me. You're going to take some napkins and I'm going to show you how to decoupage. You might have come across this technique before. If not, it's really, really fun, easy and addicting. Once you start doing this kind of craft, you really can't really stop. So you're going to take some napkins and I have two here. I don't know if I'll use both. My husband is wondering whether I'm still alive because I've been crafting for so long. I think it's taken me two days to make these projects so please do leave me a thumbs up and share this video with others. I've actually shared quite a few techniques and hacks so it might be really useful for someone else as well. So I'm going to have a look at how many bees I want on there. I'm also going to use this one here just for the bee happy. Again all of this ties in with the other two projects. So if you're new to decoupage you take your napkin, it doesn't have to be any particular napkin, just get any napkin and you want to open it up. Why is this not opening? <laughs> there we go and as you can see this is the non-shiny side and you've only got one shiny side and then you're going to take any layers out or off your main napkin. Sometimes you have two, depends how many you've got in your napkin. 
that in mind, I've just got the one. And then this gives you a really nice thin napkin to work with. Um, so then the next thing you want to do is just take your fingers and don't cut. Do not use the scissors to do this because it just looks really odd. It just looks too neat almost. Some people wet their napkin, but I never really find that I have to do that because I can rip it pretty well, just like this. Okay, and then have a look at where you'd like your napkin. And I think mine will kind of go over like that. So what I'm doing is taking Mud Podge and you can use PVA only if you water it down because PVA is really thick and it's just really not going to work. The Mud Podge is very thin and you don't want to add too much Mud Podge because it can rip your napkin And I really love using decoupage for thrift makeovers. It just is a quick way to give something a makeover. And there's also a lot of possibilities because depending on the napkin design, you've just got so many napkins. And you're gonna place your napkin on top. And this is just some cling film. I don't know what you guys are noticed cling film might be a UK thing but yeah you just take it and kind of press down on your napkin and this just sort of helps get rid of a lot of wrinkles the other tip that I have if you are doing decoupage is to go with a white background and make sure that you have painted your object white even if it's white like my jug was because you can see it just kind of melts into the background when you're working with a coloured background napkin it can kind of just look really untidy and you really don't get an effect like this. So then you're going to go over your napkin on top with your Mud Podge. And there are so many different types of Mud Podge. Look at that. It literally disappears into the, into the object that you are working on. And there's a lot of Mud Podges, Mud Podges, there's a lot of Mud Podge as I was explaining and the one that I'm using right now is glass. I typically use matte but I have run out of that so again just going with what I've got right now. Oh look at how beautiful that is. And you can seal it, you can take a sealant or just go over it with Mud Podge as a sealant. This is decorative so I'm not going to put it in to wash or anything or use it to drink out of or anything like that. And I'm going to go over the whole of the jug with this Mod Podge because it's glass so you'll be able to see, like if I just did this area, you'll be able to see that. And I just want it to look all the same. In the meantime we'll start working on our bees and I think, I'm not too sure if I should go with the bright coloured foil bees here because the one on the jug is the same. So I think I might go for the lighter ones. So again, let's start taking some of these, just working around using my fingers, ripping it and be very gentle. Obviously this is so fragile. And again, when you're applying the Mod Podge, go over it very lightly, just a thin layer, because it gets too saturated and it can rip very easily. Just take the Mod Podge again, very lightly. Let's see where we'd like a bee. Think around about here, so just a small layer of Mod Podge there. And then we'll take the bee. Using the cling film, just dabbing again. And then securing the rest in place with more Mod Podge. Okay, maybe one here. I just love watching it melt into the background. 
So I went with Rin End because putting one here is just too symmetrical. So I'm taking this pre-made bow and I got this from Zadil. And I'm going to just stick that somewhere, whether the top or right here. I'm taking these arrangements apart and I'm going to use that, whoops, I'm going to use that to place inside my jug. here and here's our final transformation from that boring jug to this one here isn't it so much better oh by the way i did change the bow i felt like that one was too big so i went for the smaller one and i really like it now i just love this whole project all of these projects i personally just really have enjoyed making but also i think that they came out great let me know what you think especially if you're new to my channel please do say hi in the comments below and don't forget to check the playlist out with the rest of my friends this is the longest video i've ever made there was a a lot of attention to detail but I also showed you a lot of techniques so I really hope that you have enjoyed watching. There were a few things that went wrong as you can see the paint just got everywhere here on my legs, the carpet, my leggings and then my cat pumps she just wanted to sit on the things that I needed to work on. Anyhow thank you so much for watching take care until the next video bye for now.